Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video in our series doing a Let's Play of Civilization 4. I guess so some people were wondering if this series had come to an end. No, it has not come to an end. I just didn't have a lot of time to get back to this. I've been posting a lot of League of Legends videos because I've been trying to put up the videos from the IPL qualifiers on the channel and that has meant that it's been difficult to squeeze in a Civ 4 video. So. Anyway, with no further ado, let's get started here. We're going to pick up where we left off. I think this is part, let's see, one, two, three, four. This should be part five, if I remember correctly. I'd be really embarrassed if that's wrong, but I think it's part five. Anyway, so uh, it's actually been a while since I saw this game. I might not remember everything that I was doing, but I think we're in pretty solid shape overall with this game right now. We have, uh, if you remember last time, we got beat out to this city spot by one turn. We wanted to put the city, uh, we wanted to put the city down where it could grab the uh, sugar tile, but we didn't quite get that. So right now, the biggest project is trying to see if we can capture that barb city. That's why I'm building these swords. I think I'm just gonna try to get three swords. I think we'll probably build one more out of Utrecht. And other than that, we're just trying to tech up. The currency will help out a lot in terms of research as we get a lot more trade routes. Anyway, let's keep going and see how things go. Whoa, getting a little dizzy from the camera. Anyway, yeah, that's all the AI units moving around. So I'm third in culture. That's not bad. Bismarck is the highest because he rushed uh, Stonehenge at the start of the game. So he got a lot of culture from that. But being creative kind of increases that anyway that doesn't really mean that much though culture doesn't really do that much yeah we're well, gonna squeeze out another sword here uh let's see i'd like to grow this city another size but i'm gonna need to get i need to get some more workers up here so i can throw down another cottage this city worker or settler probably let's build a worker and then we can chop out a settler we've got to clear these forests anyway it's not like there's a whole lot else the city can build right now. It doesn't really feel like a barrack city to me. Oh wow, we got another religious spread. Maybe that was a missionary. Where is a Porto? Oh, that's a. Uh, that's not one of my cities. That's that city over there. It's a Portuguese city. All right. Anyway, this unit's you know, heading down south. All right. Let's scope out that. Let's scope out that uh, barbarian city down here. With our highly promoted chariot. All right, so let's see. Is this guy going to finish this? Yes. All right, so. Um, actually, I kind of want... No, wait, this will get the granary done. Yes. I'm still not sure whether I want to emphasize growth or what. Well, let's chop. All right, that'll get the granary a lot closer to completion. All right, what I need to do is... I do need want to build the plantation here. Because we need the extra happiness. But, I think I need another cottage up here at Amsterdam first. So let's just use the roads to do that. Oh, well, there we go. That was easy enough. Here's the other sword. All right. You can right click and hold it and you can see it'll the uh, game will plot out like the shortest movement distance. That's what I'm using here. Anyway, we'll move through Portuguese territory. He had a settler in this city last turn. I don't know where it went to. Okay. Let's get this plantation done. We can use that extra happiness. Should be able to get it done pretty fast. Oh, and up here, let's connect, connect that. Down here, I'm just trying to... I don't actually want to fight him. I'm trying to uh, scout, do a little scouting and keep an eye out for if... Pakal is trying to poach a city up there. It's going to go on that spot. Let's actually mark that. Wait, we'll use the hotkey. Someone mentioned that you can use the Alt-S hotkey, which you can do, to put down a sign. So anyway, yeah, there's not too much going on on this particular turn. There's the settler. Yeah, the, uh, Joao has... Um, doing pretty well for himself in this particular game. We got a border expansion at Maastricht, but Tours also got a, bu um, a border expansion. That's fairly significant. Oh, someone got to Code of Laws. I wonder who it is. 
maybe Bismarck. It would make a lot of sense if it were him. Hannibal switch, uh, switched to Buddhism. That means he'll be friends with Gandhi and he will not be friends with me. So we've got a little religious block going on here. The three of us, these two, and then Pakal's kind of off by himself. So that is fairly significant, actually, that he made that swap. Anyway, this city expanded borders, but so did Tours. So we're going to need to get some culture in this city if we want to win the border war, which we do, of course. There is a lot of borders overlapping in this little area. Anyway, there's the settler, along with a spearman and an archer. We wanted this tile with them. Should be able to see into the city. Yep, so three archers. Oh, Pakal is a city over here, too. I didn't realize that. Wow, this area filled. That area in the south filled up pretty fast, didn't it? I guess we are 100 turns into the game. So if I zoom out, I can turn on the show the cultural borders, and you can kind of see where everybody is here. You can see everybody kind of met up in this bottom corner. All right, so there's no more room to expand to the south unless we can take this barb city. That's about it. So that's what we're heading down there to do right now. Wow, no promotions. No barracks, I guess. Oh, wow. Well. Anyway, we're going to have these workers try to get this plantation done ASAP. It should be done next turn, just in time for the capital to grow. That's kind of nice. Over here, I said I wanted to get another cottage down so I can fire this scientist specialist and put him on a cottage. But, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Uh, I'm going to lose a worker turn to do that. That's unfortunate. Unless, yeah, I'm going to lose a worker turn regardless. Oh, well, not a whole lot we can do about that. I could chop one, chop one of the forests, but I'll leave that go. All right, these guys. So we've got, uh, oh, we need to chop out the granary here. That's what we need to do. Chop out the granary, and then uh, we'll probably whip the lighthouse. We need to get this city going. So let's actually do it like this. Move here and move here. That way we're not, uh, every time that we move into a forest, we're wasting a worker turn this way. If I do the chops one at a time, I'll waste more worker turns. Now here, I did see this. Okay, we're all we're very close to this great person, so I'm going to let this finish, and then the Hague is going to go back to growing again. And I'll probably maybe I'll double whip a settler out of there for that spot. It would make a lot of sense to do that actually. Anyway, I'm also going to need to get some markets up soon too once I get currency finished. All right, what's what's all this? Well, where is that settler going? I guess wherever he was going, the spot got filled up. Because the path thing. Oh, here comes a. Wow, Louis is really committed to this, spreading this Judaism. He is moving out another guy right now. All right, we do have a barracks here. Build another sword, another axe. Uh, none of the build options are really that useful here. Let's just build an archer for our next city. All right, so notice right here, this is something I haven't had a chance to talk about yet, I don't think. Again, it's been. All right, yeah, so Bismarck did found Confucianism. This is kind of interesting. We've got a couple. Oh, nice. we got a forest growth. That's great. We can chop that. Anyway, notice that in this city, there's a little unhappy face. See if I zoom in, you can see it right there, the little unhappy face. That's because we have more unhappiness than happiness. So we have eight happiness, eight unhappiness. You can see where that's coming from. Eight unhappiness is from population. One is because I whipped this city. It's actually going to wear off next turn. So the city would be fine next turn. And then you can see where the happiness is coming from. One is from the palace right there. Two is from luxury resources. We have gold and we have ivory. One is from religion. We have Judaism. It's our state religion, so we get one happiness for it. And then four is just you always get four base happiness on every difficulty. So that's where it's coming from. So we have nine. We actually have uh, population eight here, but we can only work seven tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you see the eighth population point just does nothing. That's why you almost never want to go over the happy cap. I mean, you can, but it just doesn't really do anything. The extra people just are useless. They do nothing. So what we, you wanna, we want to avoid that. So let's finish this plantation. Boop. Now the plantation is done. We now have this connected. We have the silks done. So now we've got the silks here, and now we have nine happy faces. Or now we're up to nine, so we can immediately, uh, we can work another tile. And I'm gonna choose to grab this one. And I actually want to, I actually do want to, um, I need to improve another tile because this city's gonna grow to size nine really soon. And uh, what I wanna do right now is I'm just trying to grow the capital as quickly as possible. So what I'm gonna do with these other two workers Again, always competing priorities. I can have them chop out this granary. A chop will finish the granary. Or 
but uh, I actually want to finish another cottage here. So I'm going to go ahead and build a plains cool. cottage. You usually want to go for grassland cottages first because they don't eat into your food supply, but I've already used up almost all my grassland cottages. I can put another one on this tile, but I have to chop the forest first. So um, we'll probably, we might do that next, but uh, the river, the Plains River Cottage, not that bad. It's just it does slow down the growth of the city a little bit because the Plains tile is only one food and uh, each population point eats two food. Anyway, uh, a number of people in the comments have said this game seems really complicated. Like, this game sounds like fun, but it's really complicated. Well, it is a complicated game, but by the same token, you don't have to do all this stuff in order to play the game. You can, you know, you don't have to know all the stuff I'm talking about. You can play the game and, you know, sort of learn as you go along. So don't, I would encourage people not to be too intimidated. Although, I'm not sure how much that helps. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to, um, I want to get this granary done. I'm going to chop the granary. So, chop. This will take four turns, just because it's on a tundra tile. Adds one extra turn, and then this will take three turns. So when those two chops come in, they'll finish the granary. Anyway, oh, the spearmen and archer are breaking off. That settler's just sitting in there. Weird. Anyway. Okay, so if I attack right now against these archers, I only get 31% odds. Not good. That's because archers get tons of defensive bonuses. They get an, an innate 50% bonus when they're in a city. So it's kind of weird. I don't know why, but archers are your defensive units in this game. I don't know why that is, but they, they just are. So we're just going to keep this guy hanging out here for the moment until those swords get down there. The swords get a bonus to city attack, so they should have pretty good odds. I'm going to have two, I'll have two swords and axe, and then the chariot can clean up wounded units. So we'll go with that. Wow, he built this right on the iron? That's really weird. You can do that. He gets a two hammer, uh, two, two production plant from being on the, on the actual iron tile. But that's very unusual. The AI usually does not do that. He may have actually settled that before he had iron working and didn't realize he settled on it. The only thing I can think of is that's pretty unorthodox. For the AI, anyway. Uh, yeah, I probably, in an ideal world, would have planted. Um, maybe on this tile, maybe on this tile. Actually, this tile would probably be better. Then he wouldn't need a border expansion to get the rice. Anyway, I can definitely use more workers. You can almost always use more workers. Uh oh, I hope this guy's not planning on attacking me. Because he's kind of moving around a lot of units over by the border. That can sometimes be a bad sign. Alright, worker. I was afraid that was a settler for a minute. Whew. So I do not have a settler in position there. Let's let's find out. We can check if he uh he's only cautious towards me. That's a little unfortunate. Alright. So he uh, he is not planning on declaring war. This is the infamous you can highlight and see we have enough on our hands already. If he's planning on declaring war soon, he would have said we have enough on our hands already. It's a little trick, sort of very advanced trick that people figured found out about this game. So he's not planning on declaring war on me, at least not right now. He could change his mind later. Um, our shared faith bonus should start to kick in over time and uh, offset the minuses we get for close borders. Yeah, this, so his settler's just kind of hanging out there. Oh, this, okay, so Gandhi's down there. Wow, this guy, he's, he looks like he might be attacking someone though. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, he is moving around a lot of units, which is a little bit scary. All right, let's see, these guys will finish. Their cottage, boom, there we go. Uh, and I'll pick that up next turn. Although that will drop growth from plus 7 to plus 6, which is a little bit meh. I'm just going to have this guy hang, hang out here for right now. Give me vision on the area. Alright, where to next? So the capital looks okay. These guys will probably head up here and start chopping. Capital? Oh, I do want to I do want to cut that. But um, this guy probably should chop out the granary. That's the most useful thing I can think of to do with this guy right now. So let's do that. Yeah, the granary, this city needs a granary really badly because its food surplus is so low. I also need to irrigate a couple tiles here, but I can't do that just yet. And then I need to hook up the dyes. Don't I have another, do I have another calendar resource? Oh, I have the, so I have to found the city over there so I can hook up the spices. Oh, I see, he's going to attack the barb city, uh-oh. 
I better get, uh, so he's trying to, that's what he's doing. He's sending all those units to attack the Barb City. Uh-oh, so he's got the same idea we do. And Gandhi apparently does too. Okay. Well, we we have a decent chance to get this city. If not, it's not the end of the world. It just would be nice. So that's where why he's sending where he's sending all these units. Okay, we finished a chop up here. That's going to come close to completing the granary. And then that other chop will finish it next turn. Then um, it's going to need a lighthouse after that. Maybe I should have gone lighthouse first. Oh well. Not that big a deal. I'd have to run the math to see which one's better. So yeah, look at all these units coming down here. This Barb City is going down s to somebody soon. Alright, that looks good. Those are the two tiles I wor want to be worked right there. These guys cannot go anywhere that useful this turn. Yeah, we'll pick up that tile next turn. Let's move them right here. And road, so that way we don't waste a turn. And then next turn they can move here and chop. Yeah, that'll work. We should be almost ready to get that great person. Two turns, nice. That will help out science. This city is working the tiles I want. Yeah. All right, so it'll actually finish that granary. The chop should finish it. That's good. All right, now one little thing. Notice how we're close to finishing currency. Let's uh, spend a little deficit and get currency a turn earlier. Probably should have done that last turn, actually. Anyway, so we're good with Louis. Let's check. Cannot see his demographics, so let's run that for a turn. I just want to be able to get see the bar graphs with everybody. And then I'll have to run it with Gandhi. I really don't like espionage much in this game. I think it's kind of, eh, not my favorite thing. It's an addition in Beyond the Sword, but it's not really that well designed. All right, here they come. Trickling in. Who is going to get this Barb Everything City? Everything is worth what its purchaser will pay for it. Okay, so why is currency so important? Well, currency is one of the key economic techs in this game. Plus one trade routes per city. Really key. Really, really big deal. I don't know if you noticed, but my, um, I went from, what did I have? I had like 70-ish beakers per turn, and I was losing more gold than this. So I increased my beaker count, and I was, I'm losing less gold. So that's just from the trade routes. You can also build wealth, which is a really big deal. If you're in trouble economically, you can build wealth. Um, I probably, I, what I really would have liked to have done would have been to expand faster and run myself into a higher deficit, like losing more gold and then use wealth, build wealth to try to get out of it. The problem is my land was just too weak. I couldn't expand quickly in this game. You can also trade gold and diplomacy. That's not as key, right, for this setup because I've turned off tech trading. So one of the things you can do is you can sell old techs to the AI for gold and pick up gold once you have currency or once they have currency. And uh, it also allows you to build markets, increase gold, and also gives you more happiness with certain resources, two of which I'm going to have, assuming I can get that fur. And grocers, which do the same thing, more gold and also more health from certain resources. And I actually have most of those resources too. So very key economic tech, very, very key. Um, let's see, where should I go for? Actually, let's check this out. I either want to go for metal casting or push to hereditary rule. Probably metal casting just because... Uh, I'd like forges, number one. And number two, uh, I actually went for calendar, and I've actually got a lot of calendar happiness resources, so I think I'll be okay on happiness resources for the time being. I think I'll be okay. So I'm probably going to pick up metal casting. Then I might go for monarchy anyway, just because it is really useful. Then I'll probably push to civil service after that. Unless I make a play. I might make a play for great library. I do have uh, marble after all. Maybe, we'll see. If there's nothing else to build in the capital. Okay, this city, um, if I'm going to build military, I probably should uh, at least build a barracks in here. Also, let's fire that special scientist specialist and start growing again. Yep. This city grows slowly enough anyway. There we go. So here's another unit. If nothing else, these swordsmen at least power... Uh, pump up my power rating so it's not totally pathetic. Yeah, I'm not in last, which is kind of nice. By the way, notice the GMP. Notice I'm first by a wide margin. And first in crop yield. These are the two most important stats in the early game. GMP, crop yield. Very, very important. Production, not as important because you can whip for production. Soldiers, not that important. If I get attacked, I can always whip out an army. I can always rush construction. So this, this is key. 
food, most important stat in the early game. GMP, probably second most important. So I'm already starting to snowball out in front, and that'll become more and more apparent once I get this academy up in my capital, which is going to happen real soon. Anyway, uh, this guy's probably going to get down there too late to do anything, but I might as well send him down there, period. All right, this guy's got nothing to do. Let's come over here and uh, improve that city. There is literally nothing else to do at uh, this Dutch city. I tried to pronounce it before, and it was I was really bad. Anyway, let's finish this chop. Well, the granary's done. We've actually got a nice overflow here. Cue that up for a lighthouse. We'll whip the lighthouse, and then that city will be off and running. This is a fishing city. All it does is work the sea. Its land tiles are terrible, just really terrible. We're not going to work the land tiles at all. We're just going to work the sea. But because of this fish, it's actually a half-decent city. It's not completely terrible thanks to the fish tile. All right, let's see. So these guys have not attacked yet. Um... Actually, we've got a pretty decent chance to take this city because uh, Joao will probably attack and he will probably lose some of these units. Hmm, I wonder why it didn't give me the do you want to attack little message. Oh well. So we're going to try to see if we can steal that city if he attacks and comes up just short. Might be able to, might not be able to, but we'll give it a try. Oh, by the way, the AI always packs its cities with tons of archers. Okay. So, let's see. Yeah, we can't really tick up research to the next level right now. All right, over here, I am going to plant that city soonish. Um, yeah, there's not much we can do for Rotterdam, unfortunately. It's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of stuck here until we get civil service because I need to be able to irrigate it, and I just can't. So, actually, you know what we could do here? We could actually chop out a wonder. You know what? Let's do that. We've got the marble. Let's chop out Mausoleum here. Yeah, that's actually a good use of time. Because I have um, because I have all these forests here, I can easily chop out a wonder. Mausoleum's a really good wonder, too. Alright, so that'll finish the worker. Yeah, I can just put a couple workers on here, and we can chop out this wonder really fast. I mean, I've just got these forests sitting here. I might as well. One, two, three. Yeah, I can't do that. All right, yeah, let's just do it. I was seeing if I could move to that tile, but would have eaten up all my movement points. Yeah, let's do it. Mausoleum's a good wonder. I might be able to whip out, um, well, I was gonna say I might be able to do Colossus here. I do have copper, but I don't have any, um, don't have any forest to chop up there. Oh well. All right. AI moving its units. You can turn this off, by the way, if it irritates you. You can turn off the um, movement of AI units. We'll set this to a market for now. Oh, wait, what? Why is it not working that tile? Bah, I should have checked this last turn. My mistake. That city's actually going to be unhappy next turn. How much pop do I need for a market? Too much. Too much. Oh, well. There we go. All right, so... Got a great scientist. First great person I've gotten on the game. Granary that I queued, the uh, lighthouse I queued up is, will pop out there. Great lighthouse has been born. Looks like Bismarck got it. Wow, he's really been spamming the wonders in this game. Pretty sure he got it. Yep, great lighthouse Germany, thought so. Yeah, he's gotten a couple wonders. That's a good wonder. Anyway, down here. Oh, this is perfect. Look at this. Okay. So what happened here? Joao attacked with all his units. He won two battles. He lost the third. He's left this city with one archer left. And guess who has two units ready to attack? So I've got 68% odds. Two-thirds. I sh Hopefully I'll win, but even if I lose, I do have the chariot ready to attack. So I should, barring extremely bad combat luck, which I've already had, barring that, I should be able to win and take this city which would be really cool. Alright, I think I win this. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, it was size 1? Oh. That's right, it was size 1. So it auto-raised. Oops. Uh, well, that would have been really nice. At least I did capture a worker. That's pretty sweet. So if you look here. Captured a worker, captured Polynesia, got 42 gold, and destroyed the city of Polynesia. So that's pretty nice. Um, 
Now if only I had a settler down here. See, Joao is just going to settle this spot with this settler. And there's no way I can get a settler down here before him. So, that's unfortunate. Oh well. I forgot that it would auto-raise. I guess, because it auto-raised because it never hit size 2. Anyway, worker finished a granary, or a chop goes into the granary. And here I want to light a library next because um, I'm right on the border with Louis here. And uh, I want more culture, because I want to be able to control this area. I actually have a slight chance of controlling this tile. No, wait. Well, not right now. I don't want to get into the math. No, I won't be able to control that tile anytime soon. All right, I'm just archers up here. Anyway, here we can um, get this settler out. We can fire those specialists because I have a great scientist. All right, so what do great people do? Well, they have different functions. They can all set. Well, they all have a primary function. The primary function of the great scientist is this: construct an academy plus four culture, plus 50% beakers. This is what I want to use him for, but I want to use him for that in my capital. So we're going to move him down to my capital. They can also settle in a city as a super specialist. They do different things. The great scientist gives you plus one production, plus six beakers. You normally wouldn't... This is not sort of the primary function of any of them, but it can be useful occasionally with certain civics. They can also light bulb text. I can discover alphabet automatically. And that is often a good use for them, but not in this case. And you can also start a golden age with great people. Again, useful, but not in this particular case. In this particular case, I want to go into the capital and I want to found an academy. All right, so we've got another worker over here. Let's uh, get with the choppity choppity. All right, well, there's nothing for these people to do now except head back to my borders. Yeah, so that whole adventure didn't really pan out. Nothing really came of it. Oh well, it happens. <laughs> All right, let's see, this guy. Uh, so this city, I just need to let this city grow, unfortunately, it doesn't have that much food. Yeah, that's, again, like all, a familiar story here, right? If I just had a little bit more food here, but uh, no, <laughs> not enough food. Um, let's see. Probably want to save a couple of these tiles for farms, post civil service. Um, actually, I really should farm here, here, here. Probably those three tiles. Anyway, actually, no. I can always. I have the oasis here. I can always farm here, here, here. I can farm down like that if I really want to farm on this tile, and I should because. Or I could farm here, here. I want to be able to irrigate this rice. See how it says not irrigated? That's because it's not next to water. As opposed to a resource that's next to water. Let's see, do I have one? Do I have any? Where is one? All right. These are non-irrigated too. <laughs> well, I can't find an example on the map right now, but one of those corn or wheat or rice resources that's directly next to water, fresh water, is irrigated and gets one extra food, which is, of course, very good. Anyway... <laughs> Long story short, let's leave that tile for a farm. And, um... This one, alright, so this is probably the best one to put another cottage on. I guess. Anyway, alright, so we want to come over here. Yeah, let's, um, let's see. We want to help uh, chop out that settler. So we'll chop and then whip that settler. And then we'll regrow onto the cottages. Over here. Chop. And then these workers will be in place to help out this new city once it gets developed. Alright, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I really want to irrigate this tile, but I can't. No, I guess I'll just head down here and hook up the dyes. Maybe send another worker down there. So, Civ 4 is mostly about managing workers. I mean, that's by far the most important skill in Civ 4, is can you uh, micromanage workers and tiles? Oh, wow, we got a barb unit in the air? Okay. The capital actually hit another border expansion, hit the 500 culture. Won't expand again for ages and ages and ages. Granary on the late library, yep. 
Alright, move on there and try to start improving that. I'm just exploring down here. It looks like Louis in this area. Um, let's get this guy back to my territory and then heal him up so he doesn't die. Oh yeah, I got a worker too. That's that's actually really helpful. Getting that extra worker will will uh, allow me to hook up the dyes faster. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, look, look how many more cities uh, Joao has than me. Look at all these cities he's got. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got eight cities. I have one, two, three, four. Five. I have six. Uh, the capital never shows up on the list. That's what you got to keep in mind. All right, there we go. So we just got another chop in here. Notice how we get 30 from chopping, then we get plus 100% because we have marble. Marble uh, is a doubling resource. It allows you to build some wonders twice as fast. So that's going to help us. Let's see, we get uh, so we get 60 production for each chop. The wonder costs 450, so I probably need, hold on, 450 divided by 60. I need about seven chops to finish that. So we're we'll probably probably take about five because I do get some production each turn too. Anyway, let's just see if there's anything up here. Nope, didn't think so. By the way, that ice completely blocks passage. You can't pass through ice with ships. You can actually go underneath them with subs, but uh, that's kind of a rare exception. Not something you see too often. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so these workers are just basically chopping out a wonder. Over here, they're chopping out a settler. And again, that's something that forests are really good for. I might have to attack that archer with my archer next turn. Alright, so here we go. Alright, let's check out inside my capital right now. So, 40 total commerce for this city. 60%, right now I am running 60% science, so 60% of that's 24. Then we get plus 25% from buildings, so 30 research. That's where it's coming from. And notice how important the trade routes are. Plus two, plus two. So four commerce coming from trade routes. One of the reasons why currency is very important. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this for an academy. Here we go. That, that'll that add 50% there. So let's watch what happens. Added, what was that? About 10 beakers. Not a huge amount right now. Yeah, so now instead of plus 25%, we get plus 75%. So again, right now, not that great. You know, it's like it's nice, but it's not, you know, the end of the world. But we can combine this with some other techs. And as our capital keeps growing, and uh, over time, these cottages will, of course, get better and better. And we'll see this snowball pretty rapidly. Again, this sort of thing the AI doesn't do. AI doesn't really know how to do this effectively. So one of the reasons why, if you play things correctly, you can get way ahead of the computer. Hmm. Yeah, I really wish I could beat this settler down there, but I just don't think I can get the settler down there in time. Wow, there's a pig down here too? Oh my god. This is settling on the horses. That's a really good city site. Pigs and corn. Jeez. Why is all the good land nowhere near me? <laughs> anyway. Well, we've got enough to be competitive, and we've got a really overpowered leader too. Alright, let's adjust this again. You can get more espionage points by building courthouses. I'm not exactly sure why courthouses, but that's the tech. Alright, I should be able to whip this soon... soonish. Yeah, I should be able to whip this pretty soon. Actually, I should probably work this tile. Yeah, because I need to get it down to 30 to be able to whip it. Alright. Wait, what? This changed the tile. Okay. Alright. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, there's a lot of units moving around there. A lot of Portuguese units moving around. Alrighty. This is why you leave units unpromoted until you need to do something with them. Yeah, we're gonna attack with our archer, because even if he loses, the other archer can follow it up. Oh, we lost. Okay. But that's why we have another archer here, 99%. So I lost the 68%, but I did win the 99.9% didn't take any damage. So that's why you leave units unpromoted until you have to promote them for that very reason. Obviously I wouldn't have taken combat one on an archer normally. Anyway, this city's unhappy because we've outgrown the happiness limit again. Wow, five population, that is probably not worth it right now. That's okay, I'll let it grow because um, 
I'm gonna be growing into, I'm gonna be uh, hooking up more happiness in a minute. I've got the, I've got the dyes coming online soon, and I've got the spices and the furs coming online soonish too. So I'll just let it keep growing for now into the unhappiness penalty, because once I get happiness, it'll solve that. A little unorthodox, but one case where it's not, uh, where it works out okay. All right, you guys just keep chopping. Let's see, you go ahead and chop that jungle. Um, let's keep the sword down here, move the ax up. Now if I had a monarchy tech, I could swap into hereditary rule, and that would solve my happiness problems. And that's actually normally the way you play this game. Not uh, going that way is a little, probably a little bit suboptimal. Yeah, see, this settler's gonna plug that hole, unfortunately. Not really a whole lot I can do about it. All right, there we go. Another 30 production from chopping, so we get, well, along with the eight base production, we get 76. Not bad. Wow, it's pretty, pretty got a lot of culture, too. So this will only take uh, about five or so more turns. And the settler, three, we don't want to three pop whip it, but I will whip it uh, next turn. And then build another cottage on this tile. And then I can finally get a road down this down here. Instead of having to go around like that all the time. Wow, he's got a lot of units there, doesn't he? Here comes another wow, that guy's really spreading the Jewish uh uh no. It's like, yeah, that's the archer's gonna come back. It's saying you don't have any units in this city, it's really dangerous. It's like, yeah, I, I know. Alright. Should I chop one more forest? Yes, yes I should. And again, these guys are all in different tiles because I don't want to waste worker turns. Um moving into forests. Alright. There we go. There we go. I'm going to need to build another defensive unit of some kind. Okay, I can build one out of Utrecht for that new city. Anyway, my scouting info hasn't been that great thus far. Here we go. So now we can finally see what Paris looks like down here. Wow, again, this capital, I can only see like five tiles here, but this capital is already significantly better than mine. He's got crabs, he's got corn, he also has a cow resource. What does he have in the city? He's got, let's see, barracks, granary, library, palace. He hasn't developed a capital very well at all. Not too much in there. All right. All right, there's the cottage, another cottage done. Let's work that so we can grow a little bit faster. Again, those, uh, those cottages, those financial cottages, when you first put them down and they're not on a river, they feel so weak because they only have the one commerce, but it's after 10 turns, they jump right up to three which is pretty nice. Still, without the rivers, you're a lot weaker when you're financial. Just the way it is. Uh, yeah. And this this poor city, it just... I need to get to civil service so badly. I mean, it's useful for my capital, too, but... Like, I really need to get to civil service. <laughs> That'll be, like, the next big research target. Alright, here's the barracks. Build the archer. Yeah, the next thing I need to do is I need to improve this for the capital. Great spy. Interesting. Now oh, this is a wasteful turn. Waste, basically wasted a worker turn there. All right, so there's another chop. Another 76 production this turn, so you can see how that ETA on the mausoleum is dropping rapidly. I don't think I've even talked about what the mausoleum does. Uh, it means longer golden ages. Oh my god, he's got another corn? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? This capital is insane! Look at this! Look at this capital! He's on a river, he's got double corn, one of them irrigated, he's got a cattle, he's got a crab, and he's got like 20 forests to chop? Are you kidding me? This location is so much better than mine! Oh my god! What the? 
Jesus Christ! What is with this game? Why do I get the worst capital possible? My capital is so far inferior to this. I mean, I, I guess if you haven't played this game a lot, it's kind of harder to see, but... <laughs> It's not even close. Just take my word for it. it. It is not even close, you guys. That capital is so much better than mine in like every way imaginable. <sighs> Alright, anyway. So, I guess that's part of the challenge. Anyway. I mean, I can still win this game, but it's, it, it's a little frustrating when I look at the A and it's like, oh my god, it's so much better. Um... Even though this is somewhat suboptimal, I am going to one-pop whip this. Just because I want to get that settler out sooner, and I'll get a decent amount of overflow. I guess we'll finish the archer with it. Uh, you usually don't want to one-pop settlers. It's kind of inefficient. You, you more want to um, two-pop whip them. Like I said, that was kind of suboptimal, but whatever. We'll just go with it. I do want to make sure I get that spot. It's pretty important. <sighs> okay. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah, I'm a little frustrated at just how um, the two AI capitals I can see are, like, just vastly superior to the one that I have. <laughs> anyway, um, but we're still doing quite well. Like, to be ahead of Louis when his capital is that much better than mine is, is pretty crazy. Okay, so now we've actually ticked up to Pleased with, with uh, Joao, which is much better. So that means that um, he's l significantly less likely to declare war. And you can see how happy uh, Louis is with me right now. Plus six. If we get him, can get him up to like plus ten, then he won't declare war on me, period. Or he, unless he's one of the leaders who um, won't declare war, pleased. If you can get someone up to friendly, they will not declare war on you in Civ 4. There is one or two very minor exceptions to that, but as a general rule, they will not. All right, this city really doesn't have a lot to build right now. I know what I'm going to build. I'm going to build. Um, I'm going to build a. Uh, Forge. So, stuff that on wealth for a turn. Um, why wealth? Because it allows you to preserve the overflow on the tech. On uh, the let, not on the tech, on the last thing you built. Same here. Let's pres see how we've got all this overflow. See how there's 12 production overflow. We can save this by building wealth, and then if I, and uh, then I can swap to um, a forge next turn and preserve that. Oh, up here, I have not been managing this city. I, I could have whipped this a while ago. That's very in a, that's sloppy management from me. I could have whipped that like two or three turns ago. The lighthouse is crucial because it adds one food to every tile. Oh, every water tile, excuse me. So I can actually start growing with, um, with uh, the lighthouse in place. Actually, I think I want to forge there, too. And another Judaism spread. Okay, anyway. So we want to go here. Let's see. Can I get there any faster on the roads? No, I can't. Okay. All right. We'll just do it this way then. A little bit inefficient. So that city just expanded borders. Let's get this chariot up here to safeguard that settler. And up here, I want to build a road on this tile. All right. Keep poking around and see what else is down here. Jeez, Louis has... So the AI has no idea how to use a capital like this. Like, that, he should be so far out in front right now. Instead, it's Joao, who's really emerged as, like, the big dog in this game. Um, partly because he also has a really sweet capital, but he's just expanded using his imperialistic trait. Like, he's, he's just expanded, like, really well in this game. I mean, he does have the perfect expansion traits. Expansive, imperialistic. Anyway. Uh... I suppose there is a slight risk that there could be a two-move unit barb unit on one of these tiles that could kill my worker, but um, I guess I'll take that chance. All right, let's get this dyes plantation hooked up. I do need to build the plantation and then build the road. All right, what's the, what tiles is this city working? Uh, yes, that's that's what I want. Okay. Um, now what else do I have to do? Um. Let's improve this tile. Let's chop and then cottage that tile, too. All right, looking pretty good. I've got a guy working here. All right, looking good, looking good. Just You just got to always be checking your cities to make sure that they're working the tiles you want. Also, Mausoleum is going to be finished really soon. Actually, it's going to be... Actually, I think I might finish it next turn. We will see. this. 
Um, I actually do not want open borders with him because he's the worst enemy of a lot. See, he's the worst enemy of Pakal and Louis. They are my allies, so I do not want to um, trade with their worst enemy. See how it says that? It, it, the interface didn't used to say that, so I don't. I actually do not want to trade with him because I want to stay friends with uh, Joao and, and uh, Louis. They're my friends. All right, metal casting. Main thing that you want this for is the forge. It's the first production building in the game, the one that actually adds to production. So plus one unhealth, you actually get more unhealth or less healthy. Let's let's try that way. You get less healthy when you build this, but straight plus 25% production. And you also get a health bonus from having uh, gems, gold, or silver. We only have gold, but that is useful. So this is one of the key early game buildings. You want to get forges. You want to get them in place early on. So let's do that. And now we're going to make a run through the religious text because I want to go for I want to go for this. I want to go for organized religion and I want to go for monarchy. So let's knock our way through some of these real cheap early game texts very quickly. All right, we got the lighthouse. Now all the water tiles are two food as opposed to one food. There we go. There's the forge. One million souls. That means absolutely nothing. <laughs> and we want forges here. And we want a forge here. Um, so part of the reason why you want these is, I mean, they make everything better. Um, they allow you to build other buildings faster. So it makes sense to get them up in cities quickly. Can we finish it this turn or next turn? No, we got it. Won't be done until next turn. Okay. I was gonna swap to that tile otherwise. Um, I want the chop to go to Amsterdam, so let's do that. Now the chop goes to Amsterdam. Probably want to forage before market. No, this is my big commerce. Well, actually, we probably do want the forge. I probably want to uh, funnel in that chop and then whip the forge for two pop and then overflow into market. That feels like it would be pretty good. Again, I'm sorry if this sounds too complicated. <laughs> all right, and yeah, so you notice mausoleum done next turn now. Again, all these chops. So we got it done in about six or seven turns from all these chops. So that's pretty cool. We'll get our first wonder. Um, let's send this axe up here to guard this worker, just in case. Him, I want to build the road. And then these guys will be free to, um, these guys will be free to, uh, improve the new city. We're gonna farm that, uh, corn tile first. What can I do with this guy? Not a whole lot. I just want to move to this turn. We'll just throw a turn into a cottage that we probably will never finish. Whatever. Yeah, this uh, Louis start is pretty good. I mean, just all those forests are. I uh, hopefully you've seen from watching this how good the how useful forests are. All right. Yeah, the capital is starting to get very unhappy, but that's good because I, I can always use that. I can always use that extra pop for whipping if nothing else. Um. Hmm. Yeah, this city just kind of caps out at like size seven or eight. I guess I'll just leave it on there. That tile for now. No, I wanted to irrigate that. I, th I don't know. Maybe I'll chop and cottage that too. But I'd really... No, I think I wanted to save that for a farm. Oh, well. Anyway, mysticism. Notice that we're up to 93 beakers per turn. Good shape there. Let's just check. All right, we're good. You we can see his bar graphs. can see his. Uh, Hannibal, we need to put a little bit more espionage in. Hannibal and Bismarck. It looks like the two we need to. Just keep an eye on. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I said Hannibal and Bismarck. Just put two per turn in each. Let that run for a little while. And if we check the demos, we should still be looking pretty good. Yep, number one in GMP, number one in food. Looking pretty solid. Soldier count is pretty meh. Also, notice how I'm running near the top in score. Score is not as important, but it's kind of a decent aggregate. Anyway, I'm going to be knocking out a lot of cheap techs right now, so my score is going to be going up quickly because you get points for each tech. I'm going to knock out a lot of one-turn techs here. Also, I'm going to get a wonder video because I just built Mausoleum. So let's go ahead and watch that once the AI is done. Nature herself has imprinted on the minds of all the idea of God. Um, mysticism is the first tech on the religious part of the tech tree. Allows you to build Stonehenge, which is useful in some games. It's pretty useless for me because I'm creative and I get free culture. So that's largely why I skipped it in this game. In another game, if I do another game, I'll have to go for this early on. Another game when I'm not creative. Anyway. And uh, let's see, what do we want? Um, we're going to want meditation and polytheism, actually. Do meditation first. But I'm going to I'm gonna knock both of these out. They're both one-turn techs. Very cheap. Here's the wonder video. Uh, 
All the Wonder videos are similar. They show like the building of the wonder in question. I think it's kind of neat. I mean, I'm sure they're not wowing anybody six years after this game came out, but I think they're still pretty neat. You know, it's just a little reward. So anyway, here you see 50% Golden Age Land. That is very good. Very, very good. One of the things we found in our multiplayer games is that it's almost a game-breakingly strong wonder if you play it correctly. Anyway, here we want to forge as well. And uh, I, think I'll, I think I need to irrigate one of these tiles just so I can keep growing at plus one food per turn, even at that pathetic rate, but I won't even be able to grow up plus one food per turn if I don't farm one of them. All right. So, whenever Sula has completed Mausoleum. All right, so there's the road. Here we go. Now watch, my gold total is going to go down, but my beaker count's going to go up when I found this city. Watch. See? We lose gold. All cities are usually a net loss right when you found them at first. But over time, they become profitable. So that's why you want to keep founding cities. I, I would found many more cities if I could. I just don't have room. Probably go to war with somebody at some point. Maybe Pakal. He's kind of an easy target. He's one of the weaker AIs. He's a different religion. Make for an easy target. All right. I'll just have these guys. I'll have the Axemen um, sit there. And I'm going to have my Chariot go scout through Pakal's land now. Now I've got kind of the last decent city spot. There's not really anywhere else to plant a city, unfortunately. Like, I'd, I'd love to plant more, but there just isn't really a place to stick a city. I mean, I guess I could put one here, but there's no food, so it's kind of pointless. All right. Should be another Louis city, like, right over here. Nope. Thought there would be one, like, right there. All right, there we go. Chop. Choppity chop, chop, chop. All right, we're working all four cottages and the two food resources. That's what we want. Over here... Let's see. Yeah, my capital's starting to get... Oh, my capital's unhealthy, too? Wow. That's surprising. Maybe I should actually hook up that... I'll hook up that cow's resource. That'll solve uh, the health problem. Temporarily, at least. Yeah. This guy here. I'm gonna farm this tile. Oh, okay. So we've actually got... There we go. So now we've got the dyes. You might say, well, wait a minute. Why don't the dyes show up in our city? You know, it's not over here. Well, we have to build a road. You know, it's currently not on our trade route. So we got to build a road. Let's do that then. That'll make the capital less unhappy. So the capital's kind of stalled out. It has two unhappy faces and it's unhealthy. If you have more uh, unhealthiness than happiness, than healthiness, you start losing food. Notice how we have minus one food. That's what happens if you go over the health cap. So anyway, we will have some, some stuff coming in to fix that. Oh, and up here. Yeah, oh, never mind. We just have to hook up the wheat, and that'll solve the health problem. So here we go. We just got to farm this, build a road on it. That'll solve our health problem. So this is actually going to be a pretty decent city, but the main reason I want it is it has all these resources. Unfortunately, it misses the gold, but not a whole lot I can do about that. It wouldn't really have the food to work the gold tile anyway. Maybe I, I probably should have planted it here. Yeah, these three tiles are kind of useless. I should have planted it here. Oh, well. Not a huge deal. It's pretty much just the resources anyway. Other than the resources, that city's pretty crummy. All right, let's play one more. Finish on turn 115 because it's a nice round even number. And we'll go with that. So anyway, we just got another cheap tech. Meditation brings wisdom. Lack of meditation leaves ignorance. Know well what leads you forward and what holds you back. Ah, thank you, Mr. Nimoy. So what meditation does, first one to discover this tech founds Buddhism. Because we didn't start with mysticism, we didn't have much of a chance at this. It allows you to construct a monastery for different religions. Uh, because we have Judaism, we can train, we can build Jewish monasteries. And we'll probably build one in the capital, but that's about it. Anyway, so that was a cheap tech. Now we're going to grab polytheism, all these really cheap one-turn techs. We're going to grab polytheism, priesthood, monotheism, which both should also be one-turn techs. And then we'll grab monarchy. And then from there, probably code of laws, civil service. Probably. I might do literature and go for Great Library. We'll see. Alright, we got an archer here, another forge. Um, actually, I'll probably keep the archer here. Let's see. Do we need another cottage? Yes, actually, we do need another cottage here. And there's the border expansion. I got another. This hit 100 culture really fast, in part because the mausoleum does give 10 culture per turn. 
Oh, so much for dreams of building the Colossus. Someone else just picked it up. Not that we were too likely to get it anyway. Carthage. Oh, built it in their capital. I couldn't really have competed with that anyway. By the way, notice how my city, my capital size 11. Notice how none of the AIs have capitals anywhere near that high. Again, one of the things the AI does not do is build up its capital as well as a competent human player can. Even with all the cheats they get, they just don't really know how to do that. So we'll farm that. Um... There's a city. He should have another city around here, though. Because Orleans Borders wouldn't have pushed that far up. There's another city over here somewhere that I haven't spotted yet. All right, we got the road. And we just need one more turn to connect that road. And then the dies are on our trade network. All right, so we got the chop into Amsterdam. And we should be able to double whip. Maybe, I think, double whip that next turn. So, yeah, uh, overall, you can see we're starting to pull ahead because the AI doesn't know what it's doing in this game. Again, first in score, let's check out those demographics just one more time. Check out the bar graphs. So you can see in score, I've kind of gone from being middle of the pack to the tops here. GMP, yeah, way ahead. Again, the AI doesn't understand how to build its economy, and that's what ultimately will win the game because Civ is an economy game. Production, I'm mediocre because I'm not emphasizing it. Food, notice how I've actually pulled ahead of Joao, even though he's expansive, imperialistic, and has that crazy capital. Um, power, I'm in the middle of the pack. It's unfortunate that Hannibal's bar graph looks almost exactly like mine, but I'm actually quite low here. But that's fine, I don't really need to be that high. I can always whip units if I'm in trouble, and I can always rush construction too. Culture, near the top from being creative. Espionage, don't care about, near the bottom. That tells me some of the AIs have already gone through off Court of Walls. And then here in the bar graphs, number one, GMP, number one, food. Notice that my advantage is building in these categories. Number two in land area somehow, despite being so cramped. I guess because I have all these border expansions. And number one in pop. But population is kind of a misleading stat because of the way it's calculated, which I'm not going to get into. <laughs> anyway, so that's it for this one. Uh, this video is hitting about the hour mark, so I think that's time to stop. We're also on a nice even number. Uh, I am aware that Civ 5 had its expansion come out. I had some questions about that. I'm really not interested in playing Civ 5's expansion. I don't think Civ 5 is a particularly good game. If you want to read about why that is, it's on my website in great detail. An expansion to a game that's not really that great is not going to change all that much. I'm sure it's slightly better, but it's not really going to change things. The only way that you'd get me to play Civ 5 is if somebody paid me and said, here, here's money to buy Civ 5. Now go buy it and review it. <laughs> and I really do not think that's going to happen. So anyway, uh, no Civ 5. Civ 4 is a better game. It just is. Sorry. Nothing wrong with Civ 5. It's okay, but it's not as good as Civ 4, which is really a strategy classic anyway so we're going to cut it off here once again thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you enjoyed this see you next time take care guys